It's foul play coming up next. Okay, there you go. I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden Style, a show about creative ways to grow, cook, and design your world. Now, today's show, we're going to be talking about something that I get really excited about. It's backyard poultry. You know, raising a few chickens or some ducks and so forth in your backyard has become extremely popular. So in today's show, we thought we'd jump right in the middle of it. In this episode, we'll take a look at some fun ways to house your birds. Then it's off to the kitchen to make use of all of those eggs. And later in the show, I'll show you why chickens are great for gardeners. We'll take a look at this and more coming up. While Poultryville is the place where most of our feathered friends reside here on the farm, this little area, which is anchored by the Bantam Temple, is a place for some of our pet silkies. Funny looking little guys, aren't they? Well, you can see that I designed this particular coop in the form of a Greek temple. So it's the Bantam Temple with a little finial on the top of a gilded rooster. You know, poultry houses and chicken coops can come in all shapes, sizes, and styles. The thing to do is just have fun and be creative. So why don't we take a look at some other examples? Bill, I can't believe after eight years, you've still kept this original brochure where we talked about you having poultry. But this is the greatest, latest edition. Knock, knock, Jerusalem, are you back here? I'm here. Hey. Hi. I love what you've done with the, the little cook. It oh, looks so you. good. Yes, my husband designed this, and we tried to use as many reclaimed items as yeah. we could. I love to find old doors and old sure. windows, and we had a stash of them, and we thought, well, why not work the design <laughs> around those and Just put them to Just assemble use. them together. So you have a screen door, you have a French door. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it looks really good. So you've got all the components. We've got the run here where they can spend the day. I love the canopy of tree cover, which will give them some shade in the summer. Bill put those wheels on the back, which will allow you to move it around. Yeah. It's really, really good. Since I've been here last, this thing has evolved. It is fantastic. Can you kind of give me a tour? Sure. Sure. We. Uh, since you were here last, we got into the fineries. We uh, we you put in have. the laying boxes and the roost. Uh, we have room for about 30 hens uh, with the three-tier roost. This is like a chicken condo parks along. Well, I love the fact that it gets plenty of light, and there's ventilation here at the top, and there's it looks like it's completely varmint proof. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm Jerusalem's husband. A lot of the materials for the coop came off the side of the road. I wanted a coop that was going to be tall enough where I could get in there and clean it out without having to stoop over so I can stand up inside there. Are the kids helpful with them? Yes, Wiley, my oldest especially, yeah. and this is his main chore is to, to take sure care of. Make sure the hens are taken care of. Taken care of, fed and watered. I'm usually the one who takes care of chickens and I really like the chickens. And everyone else had a lot of chores to do because we, were, we, weren't, we weren't that old at one time. So I had to come outside and take care of the chickens in the morning and put them up in the evening and refill their water and their food and check for eggs and all that stuff that you have to do. Got the little... Chef au poulet. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. I hope it's going to be easy to clean out with these double doors. I thought it might be easier to get yeah, in and yeah. take care of what needs to be done. Definitely a good idea. It's very good. And um, you've got some plexiglass here, it looks like. Yeah, they slide out for um, inclement weather. And in the winter, we'll keep those in. And then in the summer, we'll take them out so they yeah, have some so more ventilation. Ventilates well. You know, what I like also about the way you've arranged this is you've got this internal area where they can be protected from winter and from predators. It's totally predator proof. And then you've got this run outside for them that's also predator proof. Yes. It's just a wonderful design. And I love the fact that you've got a staircase and you can go up and you have a tower that you can look down on your poultry yeah. pen and your entire garden. Yeah. When we return, we're cooking up a delicious egg dish. You know, when you keep a few chickens around, you always have an abundance of eggs. And I'm always looking for recipes that, well, use those eggs. You see, this recipe you're gonna love because it's really simple. It's a frittata. It's kind of a cross between an omelet and a quiche, but it doesn't have any kind of a crust. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by making this egg mixture. What I used here were 10 eggs. And to that, I added a quarter cup of cream, three tablespoons of chopped fresh oregano, and then a full cup of feta cheese, and then I salt and peppered to taste. And with a frittata, you can use just about any mixture of vegetables you like. We're gonna start with some potatoes. They're delicious in this frittata. You're gonna use about a pound of potatoes, which is like one large potato and a small one, and you can see that I've diced them about this size. And what I'm gonna do is start with a cast iron skillet. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. You can see it's already pretty hot. And what you want to do is you want to add the potatoes to it. And I want to cook these for about three minutes. You really want them kind of nice and crispy. And then I'm going to cover them and cook them for another three minutes. And I'm going to add just a little salt and pepper. Again, just salt and pepper to taste. Okay, I think these have probably cooked long enough. You can see here they look really good. That's the key. You want to make sure that they're cooked. Here's where I add a little salt and pepper to taste. And then what I want to do here is just lift the slatted spatula. I want to get all of them out because the next round of vegetables goes in. And I just want to get the rest of these potatoes over here like this. Now, you want to make sure that you have plenty of olive oil. I said start with two tablespoons. I probably got a little excessive here. Two is about all you need, but I still have plenty, so I'm not going to add any more olive oil here. Uh, there are the potatoes. Don't they look great? I've got just what I need here for the next vegetables, which will be half of red onion diced. I'll get that in there. Still on medium heat. Then I have three cups of chopped spinach. And I just want to put the spinach in here and leave it in here. It will cook this until the spinach wilts. So you're just taking the vegetables and not completely cooking them. You just want to make sure that the spinach is thoroughly wilted and you see the onions are cooking up nicely. It smells delicious. Now I'm ready to add a half a cup of roasted red peppers. And these are coarsely chopped. You can see the size there and then a fourth a cup of Kalamata olives that are coarsely chopped here. I love these, they add a nice depth to the flavor. And now what I wanna do is I wanna add those potatoes back. There go the potatoes. Yummy, yummy. Now what I wanna do is I wanna just spread these out evenly. Again, we're still on medium heat. And it's time to add the egg mixture. It's all ready to go in here. What I wanna do is I just wanna pour this 
over the top of the vegetables and evenly distribute it all the way around like that. There we go. Once it's cooked a while, you just want to take the spatula and just go along the edge of the pan, and you want that egg mixture to sort of interface with the, the vegetables. Now, with everything evenly distributed here, I'm just going to let this cook for about 15 minutes, and I'm going to cover it. Okay, now, when the frittata is mostly set with just a moist sort of top and center, which is what we have here, it's time to pop it into the oven because you can brown the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and put it in the oven uh, on, under the broiler for about three minutes, and that will finish it off. And you can just actually take this and serve it uh, directly out of a pan like this. It's delicious. You really should give it a try. Coming up, how to start your own backyard vlog. My name is Jeff May and I'm a poultry specialist, a uh, friend of P. Allen Smith and uh, I'm here. I come down to visit every once in a while just to help out with the poultry project. Heritage birds, uh, these barred rocks, silver lace wine dots, and today we have Jersey Giants here. They're a, they're a more docile breeds, and they make a good bird for backyard flocks. When you're setting up a small uh, operation for just a few birds like we have here today, half a dozen, as far as keeping them at night, I like to two square foot per each bird. That, that allows them to roost and to sleep comfortably without fighting during the night. During the daytime, you at least need to double or triple that. Uh, this pen is very adequate for a half a dozen birds. The, what's, the limiting part uh, in this location is, is this pen uh, because it's, it's about a four by four pen, that's 16 square feet. So eight birds is about the maximum I would want to put in this location. When I'm bringing a new flock in, I want to put this feeder right next to the fence for the first few hours so that when the birds roam the edge, because that's where they're going to walk, they're going to walk around the edge. They're, they're, they're exploring this area. They haven't been here uh, before, so they're just going to walk until they run into something. Obviously, they're going to walk, they're going to run into the fence. When they hit the fence, they're going to turn left or right. As they walk the perimeter, they're going to run into feed and water. So that's just a good way to help them uh, find the food and water. The birds are going to set up a pecking order, and the silver lace wine dots do tend to be a little more uh, docile, so they may be low on the, on the pecking order, but it really is an individual thing. What I like to do, and again, if I can figure out which bird is the lowest bird in the, in the group, if I can pick that bird up and make sure that there's no scratches uh, or cuts uh, or the feathers haven't been pulled out, if I know that bird is healthy and doing well, then the rest of the group will be fine also. Foot pad or foot pad health is an important part of the overall health of the bird. When I pick up a bird, I want to look at her feet and make sure that they're clean and there's no sores on the foot pad right here. Yeah, having a chicken uh, yard like this is like having a large aquarium. It's just a great, especially on a beautiful day like this, come out and sit and just watch the birds. Uh, just spending time with them, you, you'll learn. They, they, they talk, they, they interact. Uh, some of this pecking order thing is just, is just their way of uh, uh, 
establishing contact with one another, but it's very interesting. You can learn a lot. Great news for your garden when we return. You know, I'm just crazy about chickens for a lot of practical reasons. I mean, chickens are the ultimate recyclers. And if you just focus on having a few hens, well, there are a lot of benefits. For instance, any waste that comes out of my vegetable garden in the way of leaves that I might compost and so forth, they will actually eat. And what they do, well, they turn it into very useful things for me. One of the most delicious, of course, is the egg. Then, of course, there's the chicken litter or their droppings or the manure. And what I did is I used chicken manure in this bed before I planted it. The other thing that you can use is the bedding that you use inside the chicken pen. You see this wheat straw I use in their pens. It's also great to use as a mulch to cover the top of the soil. It helps keep the moisture in, keeps weeds down, works really well, and it ultimately breaks down. It biodegrades and actually improves my soil, as does the chicken manure. You know, lots of people are keeping chickens in their backyards these days, so you might think about it for yourself. Not only do you get the benefits of eggs and other things they produce, but also they can be very amusing. There's more garden style when we return. Well, I've certainly enjoyed sharing my passion for poultry with you. Aren't these cute running around? They just look like moving garden ornament. Hey, if you've got some chickens or you've come up with an interesting coop, post it on my Facebook page. I'd love to see it. Also, I hope you've picked up some ideas that'll inspire you to raise some chickens in your own backyard. After all, the show is all about growing, cooking, and designing your world in a different and fun way. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith for Garden Style. It's a lot of frittata here, people. How much frittata is a lot of frittata? It's just a lot of frittata. It's a 12-inch kilo. It's a mega frittata. A foot of frittata. It's a colossus monstrosus frittata. So take a look at it and see if it's ready. It's like Jerry's too. Brent, were you rolling? Yeah. Were you rolling? <laughs> no, it rolled on half of it. Okay, good. Okay. 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 Okay.